proudly presented by Red Cap Plumbing and Air and a proud family member of the family of podcasts on BucksReport.com. I'm your host, Samer. I'm hanging out with Stank. I'm hanging out with X. Bitches, it's not no, a not funeral, X. bro. Hanging this is not a Christian. funeral. Oh, dead, it's not bro. a funeral, bro. And I'm, hanging energy, out, bro. and I'm hanging out with Jake. Jake Arians. Welcome, everybody. What's going on, show. Jake? Welcome back to What's the Loose Cannon Jake? Podcast. Yep. Thanks for some energy, Stank. I was getting a little Jesus, worried about my boy holy there for a shit, minute. bro. I, listen, Samer, you want me to come over and wipe the tear out of your eye? No, bro? no, no. Listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a fucking rant, all right? And <laughs> oh, I need boy. you guys, just don't interrupt me. Just don't. And you can, you can, you can disagree and you can speak afterwards, but man, I gotta, I gotta get some shit off my let, chest. Let right? it out, bro. Let it okay, out. So therapy, therapy, bro. Let it out. I'm okay with a loss. I'm not, you know, sky's not falling. I'm devastated that Vita Vey is gone for the season. Huge part of the defense. Right. And I, I, you know, I get it. My team's going to lose sometimes. I get all of that, man. And I'm not mad. And I'm not really upset that the season, you know, that we lost the game. It's not a big deal. There's 16 of them. You can lose a few. It's not a, It's not as bad as some Bucks fans are going to make it seem. But, man, there were two moments in that game that I hope Jake can help me understand. Because there were two moments in that game that, aside from the penalties, aside from the referees just, you know, making some bullshit fucking calls, everything that we saw on that field that would have cost you a game at the end of it all, we were right there. So when we went for that fourth down from our own 19 yard line, I fucking loved it. Great. I, I was all in for it. I totally understood it. Ended up in a field goal. It is what it is. It was great. I love that call. But then there was a moment in the fourth quarter where we had the ball at the opponent's seven yard line. Fourth and one, fourth and one and a half. I understand that you take the points. I totally get that, man. But if you're an analytics person, you know what the analytics say? That field goal added 0.2% chance to my game winning chance. Meaning it's, it doesn't matter. Right? So, but, but let's, let's play devil's advocate here. Let's say I'm going to be the coach and I'm going to say, I'm going to take the field goal. I'm going to take the points. I'm going to look at my defense and say, Hey, I trust you guys go with me in this game. Great. I'm cool with that. If that's what you're going to do, then you, you go all in and you do that. And you know what they did? They got us the ball back. Great. Mm -hmm. Now, two minutes and 48 seconds, right? I just got done telling my defense I trusted them. They came through for me. I have two minutes and 48 seconds. I can force the opponent to use their timeouts ahead of the two-minute drill and possibly not have any timeouts left, but at least I've made them basically start offense. If I punted the ball, if I end up punting the ball, I make them start their offense behind the eight ball, rushing from drive to drive, cutting their playbook in half because now they have to work the sidelines. They can't go to the middle of the field unless they all hustle and get to that ball and no timeouts and rushing your field goal kicker out there. Usually that works in your favor, right? But instead of that, we ran the ball on first down. We, we lost a yard. That's fine. My running back's averaging seven yards a clip. I'm giving it to him two more times because I just got done telling my defense, I trust you guys, right? But I didn't do that. I threw the ball two times and I took off a whopping 16 seconds off that clock. Yeah, but you can't want I can't I can't crit understand. criticize them for not being no, aggressive. That, it's not about then, being and aggressive. Then and then go it's and criticize them for being aggressive. It's not sure about it being aggressive. You just got done telling your defense, I trust you, right? So mm -hmm. trust them again and give them you, the you, ball you, back. But, or you, you know what? Down, or, over anyways. I get that. But you know what? It it doesn't it it I don't understand that how you switch back and forth and maybe there's reason to it. Maybe Jake can help me understand it. Cause I currently don't understand it. Right. Maybe I don't know enough to understand it, but if I rewind back to that fourth down on the seven yard line, you go for that touchdown. The worst case scenario, it's still a one score game. You just have to make them work a little bit harder for it. And guess what? My defense got me the ball back anyway. Right? So if I go for it and I don't get it, I'm probably going to get another chance to get that freaking field goal anyway, and I'm going to win that game. I don't understand how those sequence of events happen. I don't care about the penalties. That whole shit about Donovan Smith is so overrated trash. Fuck that shit, man. The guy played against an all pro. He was embarrassed. It happens. It happens every week to anyone facing Khalil Mack. Wirfs had probably his worst game as a rookie, and that's okay. It was against, it was against him, <laughs> right? I can understand the excuse that's there. All of that being said, we still made two very odd decisions from my standpoint on those fourth on that fourth down, and then the consequ the, the, the consequential um, 
possession when we got the ball back after that field goal. I would have gone for that touchdown because it did not matter because it was still a one score game at the end, no matter what. I, I just, maybe Jake can help me understand this because I, I'm i cool with the loss. I can sleep with that, but I have not been able to shake those two moments in this game at all since last night. It's bothered me all day. You said don't interrupt you, so I'm waiting. Are you done? <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I love I'm done. It, I'll, you. Go ahead, bro. Okay, I'm done. Take, take, take your headphones off and rub the ears and give me a little woosah. Woosah. Give a woosah. Take a deep <laughs> Bro, he's been he's been holding that in for 24 it, hours, there, bro. It's a long time. I, I, I did was, this in the shower good. this it morning. Was, I did this in the shower good. this morning. It was good, and there was a lot to it. So let's let's start with the fourth down. My dog decided she's going to come say hi real real quick. Um, <laughs> she heard my yelling. The, the the first fourth down scared the hell out of me. But you mm -hmm. probably have the greatest quarterback sneak quarterback in the history of the game. Yes. He can call timeout. They line up two tackles, no nose guard. They both pinch, and Tom still gets it. Mm -hmm. Ballsy. I get it. You feel like you need to keep your defense off the field. They've been out there a bunch at that point. There's no way in hell you don't take the lead in the fourth quarter under five minutes to go when you have the second one. One, it's one and a half. You're not running another quarterback, Steve. I guess you've run it well, but you're running against a really good defensive line. You have to take the lead there. You have a top five defense. Some people think a dominant defense. They haven't proven that yet, but you have to feel that way. You got to take all the injuries on the offense. The offense played good enough to win. The defense played good enough to win. They didn't play complimentary football at all. Injuries killed. So that, that's my take on the first. There's no way in hell you're going to risk not taking the lead in the fourth quarter. Because if you don't get it, I agree with you. Maybe you get a chance. Maybe you don't. But I, I didn't have a problem with that. I said, if you want to go that route, that's great. Go that route. Right. I just didn't understand how that route changes the possession later. That's all. What, so what changes the possession later? When we got the ball back, we went and tried. We passed the ball two times instead of forcing our yeah, defense so I'll, to win I'll, it again. I'll address that now. Like, okay, go ahead. You have to take the lead first. Defense stops them. You get the ball back. I didn't have a problem with throwing it ever. If you know anything about my dad, and he scares <laughs> the hell out of me for, for 20 years now, everybody else makes you take your timeouts and you punt. He wants to get a first down. Now, he wasn't calling the plays. The problem I had was running it on first down. It was the perfect opportunity to hit him with a play action, something super simple. That if it doesn't work, take an eight-yard sack and make him take and make him call the timeout, right? Because you get you're in 13 personnel, run a little play action, a little dump to break somebody, get five or six stay in bounds, then make them call the timeout. But you then back them up. You get them out of that eight, nine man line they had uh, instead of running right into it. I'm fine with that, actually, too, because you make them talk, call the timeout. But if you throw it on second, now you gotta throw it on third because you gotta try to get the first down, because now you can seal the game. Didn't work that way. Um, I don't really have a good answer for that. I mean, that's that's what they decided to go with. And yeah, they were running it okay. You're not going to run it into a nine man line. I, I, they they ran it phenomenal all night against a really really good defense. Uh, definitely not Tristan Wirfs. Well, it might be Tristan Wirfs' worst game. But Khalil Mack is the best player in the NFL at his position. Period. End of story. Mm -hmm. And if you watch Twitter, the bullshit hip toss was a penalty because it was after the play. Mm -hmm. You go watch 25. 30. Gil Brandt just had a hell of a tweet about you watch the tape today, you're going to be damn happy with what you saw from Tristan, Tristan Wirfs against Khalil Mack. Kid played his ass off. Donovan Smith, some of the penalties, the penalties are ridiculous. And to say that penalties are coaching, I don't get. You, you guys got to give me this from, from a fan's point of view of how it's not like they don't work on it. It's not like they don't preach on it. It's not junior high where you're going to run hills and run sprints to you puke if you jump off sides enough. You're fucking professionals. Mm -hmm. Be professional. You led but the damn not, league in, if it's in not coaching, last year. If that's not coaching, then what is it, Jake? I mean, other teams don't lead the league in penalties every year or top five in penalties every year, yet we are. And I get it, your dad just got here last year, but this is not and a new problem. Yeah, I, this, is not, this is not a new problem for this organization. We've been talking about fucking discipline since Raheem Morris left. Greg Shell, like, yeah. it, it gets tired. The funny tiring. thing is you, you get this, like, B.A. is laid back and he's not Belichick. There's no discipline. The guys are running wild. That couldn't be farther from the truth. There's one chief in charge. They all know what's going on. It's preached daily. Don't beat your damn self. Don't turn it over. Don't make stupid-ass penalties. They also teach aggressiveness. They want to be no risk it, no biscuit, take shots on offense. They want to blitz on defense. I don't know if that plays into it or not. That's complete speculation on my part because I can't answer that question. But trust me, when I tell you I am just as pissed off as anybody when I continue to see Shaq Barrett, although that one was on the guard, it should not have been called on Shaq. Oh but he gets God, one a game. Guard. And Donovan Smith gets at least one a game. But how do, like the NFL has 200 less holding calls 
through four games this year than last year. And you throw six in a row. It, they, they've made a concerted effort to say, if it's not blatantly obvious, we're not calling it. You're telling me there was six blatantly obvious penalties in a row on one drive on one team. Yet, yet, <laughs> yet Chicago didn't get called for one holding penalty against Vita Vea and they held him the entire okay. fucking game. The they held him time. when he went into the, the locker room. They held him as he was on the cart going into the locker room. Somebody held him. Dude, like, the way, it's stop. Ridiculous. I'm the, not one that's going to make excuses for a team because of the officials, but when an officials directly affect the outcome of a game, that shouldn't happen. Third and 17, Shaq Barrett makes a hell of a play. It's not roughing the passer. When Mike Pereira comes on and disagrees with the with the crew and the call three different times, which never happens, it might be a whole year, Pereira doesn't disagree with those guys three times. Three times in one night. It wasn't a fumble on Keyshawn Vaughn. All that being said, Jamel Dean played his ass off, catch the ball, and the game's over. They threw you a pick. You had perfect coverage, and you dropped it. You didn't make enough plays. You didn't play complimentary football. They didn't play very well. And there were way too many damn penalties. And it was frustrating as hell. It's a game that you had in hand. It's a game you should have won. It's a game you needed to win. And you went and banged up. I, I, I was actually impressed with how we played offensively. I didn't think we played that as good as we did against that defense. Uh, but to put up 13 points and dominate the first 25 minutes of the game, and the defense gives up two touchdowns right there in five minutes. Nick Foles didn't know which way was up or down. And he goes seven for seven. He's a streaky player. He gets hot. He does all that kind of stuff. But to do that and then to dominate that half, and go into the halftime losing, that was as frustrating for me as anything else. Did I answer all your questions? I probably yeah, didn't make you feel any better, but I didn't I didn't know. <laughs> I had to try my best to answer. Jake, uh, I got one for you, Jake. Um, yeah. We came out here a couple, a couple of days ago, two, two, three episodes ago, I can't remember, and uh, it wasn't necessarily who the, who the best player on defense was. Um, my point was the most important piece of the piece that we couldn't afford to lose most on this defense. Vita. Uh, and I went with Vita. Yeah, there's where, no question. Where, where do we go? Like, he's not repl- – I, I, I just – I don't know, bro. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, it's it's not necessarily that you can't replace – you can't replace that guy. You can't replace OJ. OJ was finally turning into the player we drafted. He wasn't that guy. He, Bucks fans can save me that he's – there. he's Waller and he should be a receiver matched up and all that. He just was getting to that point. So it sucks that we lose him because now – he was about to become a matchup nightmare. When we get all these guys healthy, it was going to be now he's gone and you can't replace that. I think you guys can jump on Hudson all you want. Hudson can catch the ball. He's not a blocking tight end, but he can catch the ball. He's going to be a piece of this moving forward. All Claire comes back. He's more that road grader tight end, but going to the defensive side, I mean, Nacho can play. Nacho looks good. Um, we'll see. You can see if you can pick up somebody. You got it. The big thing is depth. Vita was playing a ton of plays for a nose guard because he'd move over, play a three technique and play tackle, which is insane at that size. And he's playing his ass off. So, I, I mean, and I think that's one of the reasons you saw it. You've seen Sue play so damn well. Sue's not taking up – like last year, Sue was taking all the double teams, and Vita, they were trying to block man up, you know, one man up. He was kicking everybody's ass. But they still kept blocking double team and Sue. Well, now they're, everybody wants to double team Vita, and he's still road grade in the middle of that defense, and Sue is wreaking havoc. So it's probably the double team shift back to Sue, and Nacho's got to make some plays. Uh, Khalil Davis will be really good in pass rushing situations, but he's not near the run stopper. But the entire defense is built to stop the run anyway. Uh, to answer your question, there's no way in hell you replace Vita. And he might not be out for the year. Maybe this is eight to ten weeks. It's surgery. It is what it is. We make the playoffs. He comes back. But the new uh, new injury reserve rules, who knows? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's possible. I'm just throwing that out there. But, you know, that's uh, if that's the case, that's one guy you'd love to get back if you can't make a run and get in the dance or get to December. Uh, but no, I mean, that's like, you could lose Levante for a couple weeks. Uh, Kevin Minter is solid, but he's not Levante. The one guy was really wreaking havoc in the middle of that thing was Vita. And the one, one way to stop anybody's offense and a really good quarterback is kill him up the middle. Yep. I know you you would never speculate and I would never ask you to speculate, but um, I, I have to ask you, man, and me and Stank were talking about it today. Um, I love your dad as a coach, bro. I love the swag. I love the attitude. I love the aura. I've never seen your dad look the way he looked in today's press conference. It, was it Vita? Was it the loss? Was it his quarterback forgot that it was fourth down? He just looked bummed. I'm not saying like not answer. Last night, we, last night. I've seen that. I've seen that with, with Cutter. I've seen that with Cutter where I don't have the answers. I didn't see that. I just saw he a somber. Was that mainly the, you know, the, the, the Vita Vea or the, 
the loss itself? Uh, uh, I've got to talk to him today. I didn't watch the press conference last night. I heard some of it. Um, I think it was the combination of being so frustrated and so pissed off that you went up there in a game that you absolutely should win, that you dominate parts of really minus four plays on defense, play well enough on offense. Like I said, it just wasn't complimentary. Losing Vita and seeing where that could take you in the future with the expectations of this team, because it's not, you know, go 10 and six. If you go 10 and six and get in the dance and make a run, great, but that's not the expectations. They want to be better than that. We want to keep building to, to do something more. Um, Part of it's, you know, it, it's a short week. He's 68 years old. And he's probably freaking tired. That's an emotional game. When you're screaming at the damn officials, he's not calling plays anymore. So he's got a lot more time to scream at the officials than he ever has in the past. And that was one of those games where you're just letting it fly all the time because there was a bunch of ridiculous, even on the other side, like the Levante's interception, that they called an interception, that they had to huddle to, what the hell are you guys watching? Everybody in the world, even Bucks fans are like, that's not a pick. Like, it was just a bad night for that. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was, uh, he's definitely not discouraged. It's not, a, I don't have the answers. It's, I don't really want to talk about it right now because the entire world's going to overblow everything I say. Yeah, I'm throw Tom Brady under the bus. You didn't throw anybody under the bus. You answer questions honestly that you're asked, which he's always done, is not throwing anybody under the bus. He took it on the chin and said, hey, you guys tell me, you, I'm going to ask you guys this. Do you believe him when it says it's all coaching? It's my fault. I got to prepare the team better. Or do you think um, that's just a head coach being a leader and taking it on the chin? Yeah, that's he's falling on the sword like like a good coach would be. And and people are still criticizing him for it. People are criticizing yeah. him for <laughs> for not throwing players on the bus. And when he set, comes out and says something in the media about a player, they criticize him for that. You can't win as a head coach. Real quick, going back to that, the uh, the Keyshawn Vaughn fumble, Fuller, uh, you know, hit, all that kind of stuff. I, I'm a football purist. To me, that's not a penalty. But if you're going to call it like you call every other game where a player launches at another player, I don't care if there's no helmet to helmet. Defenseless. Well, yeah, what, yeah. What, if you're going to call it in one game and not call it in the other, you know, and then I'll, and then review the review it in slow motion and say it was a, he had possession and he fumbled the ball. That play was so bizarre. And obviously it turned the tide of the game and put them in the league going into the half. Uh, it took momentum away from us. Explain that to me, Jake. What, what the hell was that play? So there's a few aspects of this. One, I don't think that's where the ball should have gone, especially for a 20-year veteran quarterback. You don't lead that dude into a guy sitting on a route in his own. Kyle Fuller made a hell of a play. That's, that's not a penalty. I, I, he was 100% with his shoulder. Yes, he launched mm -hmm. and maybe in the fine print definition of whatever the hell the rules are anymore that change every three weeks, maybe it is. Uh, I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was a penalty at all. I didn't think he should have thrown it there. I didn't think he should lead his receiver and he taken that shot. But it wasn't a fumble either. Mike Pereira came on and said it wasn't a fumble. He didn't catch it clean in his right hand. The ball bobbled. He got it again. He took two steps. He got hit. He came down. There was no football move, and that's still in the rules and the quotes. Uh, it was, that was a bullshit call, and it cost him seven points. It really cost us the game. Um, there had I haven't watched the film, but there had to be another place the ball could have gone. You're not going to get the first down anyway. Don't throw it there. Throw it away. Don't lead him into taking that shot, which he ends up getting, you know, they review and, and, we, and you get screwed on the call. Um, I, I had no problem. Kyle Fuller is a hell of a player and made a hell of a play on that play. And he might've even left his guy because he saw what Brady was going to do reading his eyes. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't watched the, watched the L22 and the end zone copy from that, but I had no problem with Kyle Fuller's play. I had a problem with where the ball went. I had a problem with the fact that they, they over, I can't believe they overturned themselves and called it a fumble. That, that was absolutely bizarre and ridiculous to me well man if we focus on that play a little bit what was so odd about that is that rojo's touchdown that they took off the board they blew the whistle and they said that th nothing after that whistle could possibly happen right they over they said you know he he caught it but oh, you know he, he can't score fine print whistle, fine right? print of the rules again okay yeah. but then if you blew the whistle when that pass was knocked out of vaughn's hands how can you then go ahead and award the other team possession because they possess the ball after the whistle. It's one or the other, man. It, 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 and it, it like that shit was all night. But what, what got me the most and, and you know, again, I, you'll have to, you know, maybe speculate on how your dad reacts to dealing with the game where it just, the officiating is so up and down and the frustration that comes with that. They called two false start penalties on, 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 on Donovan Smith. 
from my perspective, I didn't see him move. Maybe he twitched. Maybe he rocks back. I don't see it. But I, all I see is all the Chicago Bears defenders pointing and yelling and going LeBron James. And, uh, and then they, they blew the whistle, right? But then on the opposite side, multiple times, their tackles were coming out before the snap. And then the one oh. guard rocks his ass back before they called offsides on Shaq Barrett. But then on the other side of the ball, you guys are giving us these invisible. You know, I know everyone gets on Donovan Smith, but man. Like, I didn't see false star penalties from him. I'm sorry. I didn't see those. But then the same ticky-tacky shit doesn't happen on the other side. Like, they weren't even consistent in the, in the same half of football. And can you just were, talk through that frustration no, they, that comes they, 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 were, they were awful. There was really only two calls I had a problem with all night. That was Shaq Barrett's uh, roughing the passer and mm-hmm. Keyshawn Vaughn, them overturning that. The rest of them are just guys being officials, and they sucked. They just had a bad night. <laughs> I agree with everything you said. But I can't blame anything on the game on that. It sucked. And as a fan, you're I mean, that, curious and frustrated. Yeah, but J- but and J- I, that, I tweeted, I tweeted to JC. It made me think of last year. Because nobody got screwed more than we did last year on calls. It's a Tennessee fumble, run for a touchdown, yeah, oh get taken God. back. It started going back to that bullshit. And it was New York that overturned the fumble. I had a big problem with those two calls. But I'm not even blaming those on the game. We still had plenty of chances to win the damn game. Well, and nobody wanted to step up and do it. That, you're that, about the that offside, the that offsides penalty though led to a touchdown. It was third. Oh, and huge! I, I think it was like third, third and seventeen. Four, third and seventeen. If that's false start, that's third and twenty-two, right? That's not easier than third and freaking what was it? Uh, Seventeen, well, right? Third, third and twelve, 12 yeah. right? And they end up scoring on that. They do that stupid little wheel route bullshit again, and like. Like those those penalties affected the game. That and the Vaughn penalty, they, they, absolutely, they, they absolutely did. Like, yeah, I can't argue that they call. didn't. But. That was fourteen points. That's fourteen. What, points. What has me more pissed off, in reference to the penalty stuff, uh, Jake, you're mad about the rough in the passer, right? We we have scar tissue here as Bucks fans, right? It, it, we've always been slighted. We've always been, and I know it's 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 all thirty two teams are like that, but no, for real, we've been slighted. It, it sucks <laughs> for real, but. <laughs> We finally get Brady, right? We're going to get these Brady calls. I saw two legitimate roughing the passer. One where they hit him below the knees. He made that rule, by the they way. they took two steps. They invented that fucking, rule for him. Yeah, they, two steps and then, like, launched into him. No call. And then you get a bullshit ticky-tack roughing the passer on chat. I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? I, <laughs> Look, this is the stuff that will drive you crazy. You just got to let go. I mean, it affected the game, yes, but to sit here and analyze what the hell these jackasses are thinking, look, the guys that wear stripes in the NFL all think that it should be about them. I don't give a shit that Ed Hockey Lee's got biceps or his son's got biceps. Nobody gives a flying fuck that you guys are even on the field, and that's how it should be. You should be invisible, and you should police the game like you're meant to do. Too many of them want it to be about them, and that's my problem with the officials. They're not professionals. They're still part-time. The NFL should have done something about this a long-ass time ago. They will not break the officials' union, and they will not do anything about making these guys professionals. Add one to every crew. Take former players that don't have enough to do, that have watched the game, that have seen the game. They know where to go. Put one in every single city. They can go to practice every single day, and they can work on their craft as professionals. Money, for money's not the problem. They you're make two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year part time. Hell no, money's not the problem. No, I mean, come on. This, you know, you're talking about a multi billion dollar organization here. Yet they're they're you know they're getting guys from the fucking labor pool to come out here and officiate games and not have full time. It is ridiculous, man. They should really be ashamed of themselves. I have the to agree is, with you there. The more that sports gambling is getting involved, the more mm-hmm. states that pass it the more you need professional officials that work for the league and not a third party union. It's been way too long that we haven't had this. They need to add one to every crew, like I said, and make them professional officials. If they don't want to quit being lawyers and whatever the hell they are in their their spare time, then fine. Don't do it anymore. Get guys that are really good in college, bring them up to do crews, take the former players. And like I said, add one. There's a lot of different things you can do. There's a lot of things that have been suggested. Nothing's ever been done. And there's still too many people, too many fan bases, not just the Bucks, talking about this on Mondays, Fridays, and Tuesdays. We got screwed last night. And it happens every single week. Now, there's a human element. They're going to make mistakes. In my opinion, the NFL could do a hell of a lot to limit the amount of mistakes the officials make by making them professionals. I agree. But if we, were, if we shift away from this penalty talk, I, Please, I, God. I'm yeah. trying to get a little flushed. I'm trying to get a little yeah. flushed, and I was in a good mood. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you. I, I'm not as familiar with what 
Bruce did in Arizona as it relates to his scheme and using um, running back screens. So last night, it seemed like the Chicago Bears pass rush kind of started to get going as the game got, you know, we got into the third, fourth quarter. Um, you know, third quarters have kind of been our kryptonite, it seems, for some reason, outside of that Chargers game. But is there a reason that, uh, that we don't see screen passes to kind of slow that down to our running backs, especially last night? Is that part of the scheme? Is it not part of the scheme? Or was it just with the limited, you know, weapons that Tom had and the game plan, was it just not in the, in, in the mix there? Uh, Cause I didn't see anything that kind of slowed them down outside of maybe that little, that little screen pass to, um, to, uh, to Gronk on the sideline there. That one was awesome. And we oh, ran yeah. one to Rojo and we ran one to Rojo in the first quarter. Part of it is, uh, I don't know how great of a screen player Rojo is. Keyshawn Vaughn's a rookie. As far as the scheme goes, yeah, there's plenty of screens built in. There's a lot of bubble screens, receivers built in. Uh, there's a lot of draws. There's a lot of uh, kind of a pause draw where the running back goes over here and stops and the quarterback gets it to him and you you get it just under that outside rusher. Um, all that stuff's built in. You have a, a guy in Rojo that's maturing and getting a lot better, but I don't know how much that fits him. And this is speculation on my part because I wasn't a part of the game plan. And Keyshawn Vaughn was a rookie. Fournette can do a lot of that stuff, but he was emergency only last night. Uh, and he's only been there for, you know, we forget he was only there for three weeks. Yeah. Rojo, Fournette's not been around forever. He still doesn't know the whole playbook. Um, it, it probably is something you want to run to Shady McCoy if he's back, but I don't know how long that's going to linger. And he looks a little bit old, uh, solid, but that's a guy you could depend on when you run that. We ran a, we ran like five against New Orleans in the first game. I think three of them were the tight ends. Uh, so it, it's just part of the game plan. It's part of the game flow. I would have liked to seen a draw under Khalil Mack as he's coming around the edge. Problem is like Donovan overset the one time and he came up under. If you ran a draw into that, your ass is dead. Yeah. Right. You got to make sure he's coming around. Now he's not going to overset if we're running a draw underneath, but same kind of thing. If he just decides to spin, you know, it's just part of the game flow. It's easy to say if you're a bears fan, they're tired of seeing screens. That's all they see. I mean, (laughs) I'm talking to page. They're bitching nonstop about, well, we see the damn screen paint. I'm like, well, hell, if you're a Bucks fan, they'd be happy to sell the switch. Um, (laughs) It's part of it. And it's easy, easy, easy to speculate the day after a game and say, why didn't we see this when the pass rush was that much? Pass rush was good, but we're chipping with Gronk. We're, Gronk was dealing on one side, whichever side he was on, and Keyshawn, when he was in, was chipping, uh, and there wasn't really a ton. The guys up, up in the middle did really good, but it's a damn good defensive line. It's 43% of the pass, the dropbacks got pressure last night. I think it's the highest we've had all year by far uh, from pro football focus. And that's how you beat Tom. You that's go it. back to, and we were running it good enough, you'd like to play action off of that. But you couldn't because we couldn't protect long enough to get that stuff. And then you have no receivers. Scotty was, I don't know, 60%. Mike's a freaking warrior. He's 50, 60%, but you could obviously see limited. Tyler Johnson, awesome game. Rookie, first catches, phenomenal first half. Cyril Grayson fit in. Uh, Mickens. But you, Mickens, yeah. Mickens, Mickens and, and then you got, but you got Hudson filling in for Grayson. Like it was a hodgepodge of how you put it together. And like I said, they did enough offensively to win. Listen, Jake, out, careful, careful giving, careful giving Hudson too much love, bro. You will get blocked and unfollowed by Warren Sapp, who clearly <laughs> hates, like I did last night, for even giving Hudson any love. He unfollowed me. So you got to be careful for that. Hey, Jake, real quick, have we even seen the the whole offense yet? I mean, it's been no. walking wounded since day one. Day one yeah. Nobody's been healthy. You're missing half your piece. It's hard for me to criticize the offense, and you can be critical. Some of the play calling, I'm not a huge fan of. I'd love to see us have more success in scheming against other defenses' weaknesses, but what the fuck do I know, bro? I coach Pop Warner football. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are up against. I don't know what Leftwich is up against. And, again, it's a new quarterback – you know, a lot of new pieces on offense with, with new players still learning the system. They're trying to, I'm assuming, you know, uh, uh, use some of what Tom likes to do and merge it in with, with, with what your dad loves to do and, and make this marriage of an offense work. When, you know, when is it time to panic with this offense? I mean, I guess that's a terrible question. When when do you when yeah, do you that's think a when, question. when do you, <laughs> you, you you just started the question with yeah. when, when you, walking wounded? I know. When do you think what are you talking about? Yeah. When do you think we'll start to see things really gel on offense? That's a better question. Like I said, bro, I'm a moron. Answer if answer we if, if we if we rewind two days before that game, 
Mm -hmm. then our quarterback was still the NFC offensive player of the week mm -hmm. and the FedEx air player of the week. Mm -hmm. Last time I checked, he threw five touchdowns to five different guys without Chris Godwin on the field and 359 yards. I think we saw it in the second half against the chargers. I agree. Without yeah. Chris Godwin, with OJ going out. Short memories. Right. We've seen it and we haven't seen it put together for a whole game yet. Right. And that's okay. You don't <laughs> see, have you seen that from the chiefs? Minus no. one game against the Ravens because they look like dog shit for most of their games, but they can turn it on when they need to, and they pulled them out. They looked awful against uh, uh, New England the other night. Awful. They turned it on a little bit late and made some plays. Um, they can turn it on when they need to, and we're not there yet. That everybody on that offense came back. Brady's learning a new system. We're merging some stuff in with him that all the rest of the guys that are there need to. Yeah, they got to learn. Fournette's learning some new stuff. Shady's learning new stuff. It's going to take time, and you got to rely on that defense. It should be dominant. The defense should have dominated that game last night and won that game for us, and they didn't. Um, and not that, but they but they did at the same time. They only gave up twenty points. The yardage wasn't that much. Like I said, it just wasn't complimentary football. And then you throw in the calls and penalties, and it just it went. It was a shit show from there. This and it was a my, one point loss. This is my last, like I guess you could say, negative one, Jake. And then I'm going to leave it alone because then it's hot. Hot, bro. I can tell we're all upset. My last one, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna frame it as a general question, not specifically anybody on our team. But um, it's the maddest that I've seen twelve since he's been here on the sidelines. That was crazy. How does one? You've been in a locker room, Jake. You played. How does one go off on your teammates the way one does, but then? make the egregious mistake of forgetting what down it is. How do you, I mean, do you, do you lose guys? I mean, do you lose players in the locker room? Are guys looking at him like, Hey bro, what the fuck? Yeah. You went off on me on national TV and yeah. you're over here. Right. Like. Yes. And no. Right. So on, on one hand you have, well, he got two hands cause there's six ranks. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, walking bro. in he'd been to, Nine Fair Super Bowls, enough. and he is, by all accounts, by everybody, the GOAT. And he mm -hmm. brought you back, and you saw it last week. They believe in that, right? So you are who your resume is. No matter who you are, your resume speaks for who you are, right? The job interview, personally, whatever it is, he has that, right? And they know that he's fiery, and he's yelled. It's not the first time he yelled at him. He yelled at him in practice, but just not on camera. It's not on national TV. He went a little out there a couple of times last night. He was that frustrated, and then he makes that mistake. So, yeah, there's definitely going to be some eyeballs because in that locker room, we're all equal. You're the GOAT, but you're my damn teammate. I'm blocking for you. We're one of 53 guys in this locker room. Hey, jump my ass when I screw up. But, like, the best part about Tom is he'll take the accountability for it. He might not admit he knew it was fourth down or not. I don't know if he's ever going to come out and say that. Everybody saw what was going on. You guys knew it was fourth down. We all knew it was fourth down. Everybody other than Skip Bayless, who apparently said that B.A., told Byron it was third down and Byron told Tom it was third down. That was, that was Skip's take oh, today. Oh, Skip has that um, kind of insight on the sideline. Wow. Yeah. Apparently that was, uh, cause, cause it couldn't have been Tom that just didn't realize it in the heat of the, in the battle. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of both, but at the same time inside that locker room is so different than anything you're going to see on the sidelines in the heat of battle. The guys, he, he, Tom be the first one in there banging his chest. It's on me. I love you. I'll get better. We all got to get better. He's not going to just go back in the, in the locker room later and start pointing fingers at everybody. The locker room's fine. And it's, I go back to what I said the first time, or the first part of that, it's freaking Tom Brady. Like it's, they yeah, all it's believe. It's also in who he is. fucking football. And that's what happens on the football field. It, people who are on Twitter with their Twitter fingers, who've never been in a locker room or been in the heat of a battle, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, how could this guy yell at that guy? Just happens. calm the fuck down. Dude. It, this shit happens. Coaches yell at players. Players yell at coaches. Players yell at each other. It's part of football. Well, I think what we're all learning is, as Bucks fans and um, <laughs> what it's like to have Tom Brady as your quarterback and the national spotlight that comes with that. The good, the bad, the ugly. You go back to that week after New Orleans and there's a rift between B.A. and Brady. And then we win three straight and they are the greatest freaking thing since sliced bread. And then we lose and Oh shit, the sky's falling again. And they, there's a rip and Tom Brady yelled at his teammates and they all hate him. And they're come on, man. It We're can't all prisoners be the, of the moment, man. That's what yeah. it is. Jake, you, it is, but it's the national media media narrative because it's Brady that it just, sure. everything gets blown yeah. so far out of proportion. Jake, you've been on an NFL sideline. 
how does it work as it relates to knowing down and distance in terms of communication? I mean, is it simply quarterback looks over to the sidelines, he sees the the number four on the uh, on the marker, and that's how it goes? Or is there an actual like hierarchy of communication where this is passed on between BA and Bruce? And I mean, is it just simply looking over and knowing it's fourth down? Because I, I can see guys forgetting in the heat of the battle, but is there like a reminder that a set us like a you know, something that's set there to to kind of keep everyone on the same page? How does that work? I'm gonna, I'm gonna whoosh. Uh, I'm gonna whoosh and take a breath. Uh, I, I mean, I'm just curious, man. How do you not know it's fourth down? You're, you're Tom Brady. You're the greatest player in the history of the NFL. You've been playing quarterback for 20 years. Yeah, and even that you can get lost in the heat of the battle. But there's no way in hell Byron didn't go fourth and five. Make sure we get the first down. Don't have to take a shot. He only has 15 seconds to talk to him. But like, there's no way that doesn't come across. Okay. Right. There's no way what's heard in the heat of the battle when you're fired up and like, I'm ready to run the next play and all that. Who knows? But everybody knows fourth down. Do you think we need to tell Tom Brady that it's fourth down? Well, I wasn't really saying, or do you think that you're greatest of all Tom time? Brady. You should assume that he knows the situation right there. Well, Going back to your, your problem with running the ball or you wanted to run it three times a punt when we got the ball back, right? When the defense held him, I'm under the impression that Tom Brady should go up to the line and say, there's nine dudes in the box. There's eight on the line in front of me. I'm just going to check to something else. You have the freedom to do that. Yeah. But that goes back to not necessarily feeling that comfortable in a new offense than the merge of whatever's going on from what you had for 20 years. I don't think he runs the same play in New England. I think he checks to something else. Yeah, I don't think we're a- there. And the, I don't think we're there in the progression of the offense yet for, for Stank's question earlier about when are we going to see this offense get to that? When he feels comfortable enough to do stuff like that, is when we're really going to be able to dominate and dictate the defense is what we want to do offensively. Yeah, and it's probably a little harder for him to audible out of a, a run play when you're audibling to, you know, potentially throw to Cyril Grayson and Jaden Mickens <laughs> and not not Chris Godwin, O.J. Howard, Mike Evans, and Scotty Miller, who is even out there. Is not, you know, he was obviously just a decoy yesterday. Um, so... He actually was, he, Mike, Scotty got open a few times. He got open deep a few times. Tom just didn't hit him. And, and look, mm-hmm. before this gets taken out of context and I get blown up in all of freaking Bucks land and every podcast and every newspaper, I'm criticizing Tom Brady. No, I'm not. I'm talking about the position. I'm talking about what you expect from the greatest of all time in a 20 year vet playing quarterback. But I'm prefacing that by saying in this offense is not quite there for that progression yet. He's got all the ability in the world to change the damn play if he wants to. He's freaking Tom Brady. That's why you bring him in. If you want to make headlines, just say Jameis would have made that play and Tom did. <laughs> Stop. Don't do that. All right. It's been fun. I'm, 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 I'm out. <laughs> Jake, Jake, by the way, I won't be the first woman. Thank you, Jake, because I know you take these harder than us, but this was therapeutic. Hurt, man. This was therapeutic, bro. I feel a little I better. Am, uh... I feel better. Let's talk about positive. We got 10 fucking days, Jake, to get healthy. We're going to get Godwin back. Look, that's we're going to get Mike back when we fine. As first and foremost, get healthy. I don't know that we're going to get Chris back. We'll see. Shit. Hopefully, Mike, Mike should be good. I mean, he played through this. Look, Mike Thomas missed three weeks from a high ankle sprain. Mike played three days later. Cool. No, like finish the game. And finish finished the game last week. It was a ball. The real. Field, please. The real can't guard Mike. The real. Um, yeah, well, Mike Thomas look, is there's a bitch. There's plenty of positives. Look, the, um, the Packers are playing really well. Offensively, they're really good. Lazard's out. He's going to miss that game. They got one really good receiver. They got one really good running back. And they have maybe the greatest of all time, most talented of all time playing quarterback. One of the greatest of all time is playing really well. But their defense isn't great. The Smith brothers, but everybody's lighting up that defense. It's going to be a shootout. We need our weapons. I'd like to see. Plus, you got 10 days to put in a game plan. They're, they got a bye week. They're putting it in for us. They're going to be healthy. You're going to see. I don't, I don't know that we're going to be as healthy as they are, but we'll see. And they, look, if that game, if you don't win that game, it's still not the end of the world. You got the Raiders, you got the Giants, you got a bunch of winnable games on the stretch, and you got to keep getting better and you got to get guys back and get healthy. The main thing, I don't give a shit how talented you are in the NFL. If you lose enough guys, you suck. You just can't be deep enough. The NFL and the salary cap is not built for you to lose really good players and have to replace them with guys like next man up is a great mantra. It's a great thing to tell your guys. But the next dude up ain't Vita. It just that's not how the NFL works. You can replace it with a couple guys. But it's really, really hard. And if you lose too many of those guys, man, it's it's really, really hard to go win. We lost I think that's what makes I think that's what makes last night suck so bad. Because mm-hmm. you had all this, and we all knew going in this was going to be a close game. You don't have enough pieces to not be a close game. Mm-hmm. And it was still right there. 
I was texting Sam the other day saying like, dude, I don't give a shit how ugly it is. I hope we come on and we talk about this the ugliest damn game ever, but we won three to nothing and we're freaking partying. Yeah. Didn't happen. So like the sky's not falling, but we got to get healthy is the main thing. Well, I mean, we're still potentially tied for first place in our division, regardless of what shit, happens. Five weeks. Right. <laughs> they ain't giving out division crowns in October. No, I agree. I damn. <laughs> and you never know. I mean, Green Bay's Green Bay's got another game to play. So who knows how healthy they're going to be coming into oh, they're our week. next? No, they're they're, they're off. Week. No, they're they're, they're off week. this week. Yeah, mm. they're they're, they're, go, they're going to be as healthy as they they've, they've been. Oh, okay. Adam well, will be same. back running full speed. They're going to be only facts are coming out of my mouth tonight, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be they'll be game planned up and they'll be healthy. I might just but, mute uh, that, you and, and cut you completely out of this episode. I mean, you we, brought we do, literally we do nothing. Stop, we do stop the run. We do stop the run really well, really well, though, Jake. And and if they're missing. One of the top receivers. Um, you know, I don't not like our chances. We're, we're healthy in this, and if we're healthy, we can go up. We can bang with anybody. We can we can compete with anybody. Who um, beat us yet? We beat ourselves. Twice. Beat ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> like if the Packers come in and beat us, all right, let's talk about it. We play really good with no penalties, no turnovers, and we get beat. Okay, we know what we're looking at, and we get the playoffs. If exactly. that, until that happens, we got to clean up our own stuff. There's one thing though, and Paige says it all the time on y'all show. Um, this this man is maniacal, and, and if the way he walked off that field last night, practice ain't gonna be fun, man. They, you know, it, it's they'll be they'll be fucking ready. <laughs> they'll be ready for Green Bay. The the, the positive I, I, the, the positive that came out from last night too, man. I, we didn't really touch on it too much, but dude, Rojo, Rojo looked good. Rojo, Ooh. last two games, being given the opportunity to be the bell cow. I mean, he is. He's playing ridiculously well right now, and he he, he, he was so close to that to taking that run all the way. He has just a little bit more speed, or you know, breaks another tackle. We're right there, and and seeing his progression from what we had him as a rookie before you guys, you know, before your father came in and took over, like this guy is making the progression. He's making all the right. He's taking all the right steps and getting better and better week in and week out. And now we're seeing like if he gets the opportunity and the number of touches. He's a legit starting NFL running back, and I think he's number three in the, in the league right now. I know it's Thursday night before before, before this weekend's game. Yeah. To play. yeah, he's third third in the league in rushing right now. But he's, and he looks he, phenomenal. The big he, thing is he's great. maturing. He's getting confidence from this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then the best thing is you still want Fournette. You still want a one-two punch. Uh, yeah. Fournette catches it really well. You can do different stuff. Put them in the game together. You still want to be able to to get a lead, and then run it down their throat, and having two of them. I mean, Rojo's 225. You saw some power last night some time, but he's shifty. And Fournette will run to his size and be that power guy. It brings the play action, and you see a lot more of what you saw last week against the Chargers than having to go shotgun and do a bunch of this stuff with the receivers until they're all healthy. Uh, you need both, but Rojo looked phenomenal last night. The offensive line is getting better at run blocking. That was a really good run-stopping team and a really good defensive line that they did that on. Uh, there were a lot of positives. It was just the positives were then shifted by a call or – a penalty or a, a missed a play. Like it was just, it just wasn't complimentary football. And that's it's so hard to win if that's not the case. But that, that spin move in the hole, not all a lot Roquan of guys Smith can do that. Twice. Not, not a lot of guys can do that in the league. That was all that, Rojo. That was special. That yeah, was downright 100%. special. 100%. Hey Jake, is it just me or do we seem to be running the ball better on the right side behind Kappa and worst? Seems that way. Seems that way. I, I, don't, I don't go back and watch the All-22 and really break all that stuff down. Uh, but you saying that, it seems like it does. Look, Tristan Wirfs is a freaking animal, dude. Mm -hmm. If you did All-Pro right now, we have three offensive linemen making that. Yeah. Jake, and Tristan's I, one I don't of think, them. As a freaking I don't think rookie, I realized, he's played five games, man. I don't think I realized how big he was. Like, un until I, I've, I've seen him now, like, finishing people, panking people, and I'm like, damn, that's – Now go, now go back to that he's draft thing where Jay jumps out of the pool. And the athleticism at 335, 340, whatever the hell he's, he's – yeah, I mean, yeah. And he's just coming into his own. Go back to what we just talked about, Rojo gaining confidence, getting that maturity, getting that comfortability in the NFL. He's played five games. Five yeah. games. It's crazy. Like, and he played went, – he went mano a mano with the best pass rusher in the NFL last night and held his own. He gave up some, but there's nobody that's going against Cleo Mack for that many plays and not giving up something. I forgot who it was that, that broke down the all 22 already this morning. And they said that, um, <clears throat> basically what you're saying, uh, you, most, better, most you better figure out who it was before you tell me, cause I might uh, have to dispute all of what says. <laughs> no, what, just what, because you have access to all 22 doesn't mean, doesn't you, know you know what you're looking at. You're talking doesn't about mean, or looking at. I, I get that. I, I get it. I, I, I've heard you say that before, but 
he was agreeing with your point, basically, that he did give up a couple plays, but his message was collectively, Bucks fans, take a breath, relax, because he went mano a mano with, with Khalil Mack, and he said there were some snaps where, where Mack threw the entire arsenal at him in one snap. Yeah, right. I mean, just, you know, uh, 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 um, I can't think of the word. Power move, saying. spin move. Power move, spin Vanessa move, counter, moves, counter. Yeah. He kept countering him and countering Shop, him and countering yep, him. And he yeah. was there for every damn, he just, you're going to give, it's Khalil Mack. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's one of the first things. Like, like I said, from, if it wasn't Jake. the penalty post play on the hip toss, which wasn't called, um, then nobody would be talking about how badass Khalil Mack. He had a great game. He's freaking Khalil Mack. What do you expect? He's making $20 million a year. He's the third highest paid defensive player in the league. You are the best dude at your position, period. There's nobody else. Come to me with somebody that's better than Khalil Mack playing outside linebacker in the NFL. You can't because it doesn't exist. He is the dude. He's paid like the dude, and you expect to be paid like that, then you better perform like that. He had a great night. But Tristan held his own, dude. I mean, there's no way you could expect any more from a rookie in his fifth start on national TV against Khalil Mack than what he put up. I don't so, know. I think Gerald McCoy. As a whole, the offensive line wasn't great. Did you say whole, Gerald the, McCoy? Did you say Gerald McCoy's I, name? I think Gerald McCoy. Mute, mute his mic right now. I'm He's kidding. a defensive <laughs> tackle, not not an outside linebacker. I just I just had just just for Bucks fans. How dare you, bro? I, I don't think Gerald man. McCoy has as many sacks in his entire career as Cleo Max had in like two seasons combined. <laughs> what are you even talking about? Because they play different positions. But yep. you hit me with a Jameis and a Gerald McCoy now. <laughs> oh God. In the same Just podcast. Like, I'm done. We I'm are trying to get you in trouble. Cancel you guys. We are trying to get you in trouble. Oh my God. Jake. Let's talk about Chris Conti. No, I'm just kidding. No. no, listen, no, 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 no. Jake, it. this has been very therapeutic, man. I, I, I'm so. You look better. You look better. Thank you. I nothing feel better. else comes out of this, bro. You look better. <laughs> thank you. I'm, I'm probably going to go run like five miles now and then go to sleep. Or you have fun with that. Watch it. Right. Anyway, take my wife on a date. Have Jake, a what's your what's your after game ritual, man? Win or lose? What, what what do you do after a game, typically? It depends on win or lose. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty wide spectrum so thing. You know, yeah, if it's man. if it's a if it's a Thursday night, there ain't nothing else to do but go home and stew on it. I had to go do the show last night. I had twenty minutes to half ass get myself together to talk about the other games coming up this weekend. If it's a Sunday. Win or lose, I'm watching the rest of the games. And that usually helps because you're watching more stuff and your mind's not on all of what you just saw. Either way, man, I, I'm up late on Sunday nights. I just The juices get flowing, whether we play the early game or not. It's just, it's been my entire life, right? I mean, I'm, I'm 42 years old. My entire livelihood has nothing to do with, I mean, it does. I have, I'm in the NFL in a bunch of different ways, but necessarily like wins and losses aren't mm-hmm. taking food off my table like I grew up. I'd have to move every three years if we don't win games, right? But the way you grow up and that's in you, it never leaves. So the sky falls when we play bad. When I tell you guys I take it harder than any Bucks fan, I am more critical than any Bucks fan. I am obnoxious during games. Like it is absurdly ridiculous. I'm so glad there's no camera on me and how embarrassing it would be the way that I act during games. Because um, it hurts. I think you'd fit and, right and in with wins, us. Wins are more, more, wins are more relief than they are fun. But you still get that okay, we have it, you know, and we have a chance. And then, and then the losses hurt. And ones like that, that feel like they're taken from you and that you had right in your grasps and you didn't get them. Those are the ones that you're still, and it was the only game on. Those are the ones that still suck. And Sammer's got to go on a rant the next night, you know, 24 hours later. Trust me, man. I get it. Yeah. No, no one was happy being around me today. Just so you know, nobody. I was grumpy. I was a just jerk to everybody. You see, you're your normal self pretty much. No, no, no. I'm usually that way, but I'm not hurtful. So, yeah. well, Jake, you know, when we're, when we're hanging out at the house on Thanksgiving, we're, you know, cause I already, I already told your mom what I'm bringing Thanksgiving and hanging out with you, watching football in person, we're, we'll get to see the real you. No, cause we're not playing. It no, ain't like that. We can watch game. other it's games. Our game. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm look, I let it fly for every game. When somebody's an idiot, I damn sure call them a stupid <laughs> follow up to expletives. <laughs> um, it just comes out. And I see it different than everybody else. Problem, my problem is, especially we're in a bar or somewhere, I scream 20 seconds before everybody else because I see it happening before everybody else sees what happens. And I'm like, you dumb mother. And everybody's looking at me like, what the hell? And they're not even watching the TV anymore. That's that's my problem. I got to, I got to, I, I, my problem is, I got to work on, I got to work on that. We get kicked out of establishments because I constantly clap and it's a very, apparently it's an obnoxious clap. I'm not sure. Obnoxious um, is not a word for that. Um, shit. Last night I was doing it at home. Nobody was asleep because of me. It was uh, 
I'm probably sleeping on the couch tonight. So I'm the same. I'm the same way, dude. I'm clapping at everything. I'm screaming at everything. I'm yelling hey. at everything. I'm cussing way too much. <laughs> it, it is. It is what it is. I appreciate you coming on. We appreciate you coming on. Therapeutic, Jake. I see your, your wife there kind of came in the frame a little bit. You got to take yes. her out. Your beautiful wife out the game. She looks good, too. Man. I'm like, you guys are you guys are fun, but I'm going to yeah. take her for yeah. a drink. Yeah, man. I appreciate you coming on, Jake. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. We will catch up again. You made me feel we'll so much again, better. Um, have a great night, and go Bucks. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Go Bucks.